Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're all welcome this morning to this wonderful Sunday service. Isn't it lovely today? Look at, the, look at our side. Bright, sunny, warm. Yeah. Hallelujah. We have the good weather. Summer have officially started. I'm declaring summer started. <laughs> Um, I want to welcome you all to Balifema Community Church, um, and I also want to welcome somebody really special. Um, yeah, <laughs> Audrey, yeah, you're so welcome this morning. It's been some time, so we're welcome, you know, you're welcome, we're happy to see you. And if you're worshiping with us for the very first time as well, you're so welcome. We want you to enjoy the service. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, and let the Holy Spirit minister unto you. And for those that are watching at home, you're welcome to today's service. So before we start, uh, before I ask the worship team to come forward, we also have a special guest amongst us this morning. So we have Richard. I would like to welcome Richard to the stage, you know. And I'm just going to do just a brief interview. Well, not an interview. We just want to get to know Richard a little bit. So it's not an interview. So okay. feel free. Be relaxed, okay? So, yeah. Take okay. your seat. <laughs> yeah, relax. Okay. No, no problem. So, Richard, thank you so much for coming in this morning. And you're so welcome to Bali Fermat. I know this is not your first time in Bali Fermat. And... For those who don't know you, I know you because I do meet you at all, you know, the e EMI event for leaders and all that. But for those who don't know you, who is Richard? And tell us about yourself and the family. Okay. Um, well, I'm Richard Mahoney. And as you know by my surname and my accent that I don't come from Dublin, um, I uh, was born in the north of Ireland in 1953. So anybody that's good at math, you'll immediately know that I'm 69 years of age. And yeah, I know I don't look like it. Don't look like it. Um, I've been married twice. Uh, my first wife died in 2009. And um, I have two children and three stepchildren uh, who are all adults. And I have one grandchild. And that's who I am. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. So um, now. You know, we want to know a little bit about your faith and how you came to know Christ. If you can share that with us, you know, your journey and where you are currently. Okay. Um, I was brought up in the Presbyterian Church. It was pretty dead. I never heard the gospel unless a missionary came. Um, we kind of heard it at Sunday school, but when I was 18 in my first job after I had been at Agriculture College, um, there was this guy there, George, um, he he was a in the, in the area. I was a sort of assistant to the farm manager, and uh, every week I'd have to go and uh, go to George. He was a carpenter in the institute or the research place, and he uh, I'd have to go to him and find out exactly what uh, he needed for that week in materials. And George would always every week he would faithfully witness to me. But the first time I met him, he said to me, "I'm George." Uh, a carpenter from Dramara. I would like to introduce you to another carpenter, and he's Jesus <coughs> of Nazareth. And um, he witnessed for the two years I was in that job, he witnessed to me. But I, I didn't become a Christian until I was 29. Um, my sister invited, uh, or my brother in law invited me to a meeting. And um, you couldn't get me inside a church since I was a teenager, uh, you know, except for weddings and funerals. So, actually going to a church, and this was a weird kind of a church because it had the name Pentecostal over the door, and um, uh, me going in there, it would only be the Holy Spirit would bring me. So it was a bit, long, big story, but at the end of the meeting, after the pastor had preached, um, I can't remember what he preached on, but I bowed my head as he told us, and they sang Amazing Grace, and when I raised my head, I was born again, because grace is so amazing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for that testimony. And how, how has your journey been so far since, you know, you became born again? Have there been any, any challenges or has it been smooth sailing? No. <laughs> uh, is the answer. Uh, I, I, within a few months of 
peaceful grace. I came through a, a real difficult period, and um, I just, I, I, I just, uh, I, I can't even explain what it was like. It was really hard, but when I came through that, I realised that God was calling me to Bible college. Um, he, he wasn't calling me to anything else, just to Bible college. So off I went to Bible college in Belfast, and um, I was there for three years. And at the end of that three years, then uh, I was newly married and I was posted to Navin because my church was looking after uh, a, a, a hall, a mission hall in Navin. And I went through another year and a half of real difficulty um, where God really transformed my life. Um, and after that transformation took place, then the church began to be established. But uh, my wife uh, then... Uh, went through a breakdown and we had to leave and I was a frustrated person for three years um, in a sort of sabbatical situation but we were asked to come back to Navin so we came back and um, I, I, I can't remember a lot of things so I'm just giving you the potted thing um, she had another breakdown um, in 2000 and then 2008 she had another one and as a result of that she passed away and it was uh, horrible is not a word that I use often, but it was horrible. Um, but through everything that happened, God's grace was available, and the peace of God that transcended all understanding was in it as well. Um, in 2000, I, uh, 2011, I married Bernie, and you know, uh, Rolly and her, her husband, and I had been friends. Uh, we'd been fr all friends together, the four of us, uh, down through the years. I'd led Roly and Bernie to the Lord in 1990, and Roly and I did evangelism um, on the streets. And Roly passed away. I buried him in 2007. And uh, Margaret, my own wife, she died in 2009. So people were throwing Bernie and myself together, but neither of us thought it was a good idea. But when God threw us together, that was a different ball game. So. Um, that's what actually happened, and we married in 2011, and I immediately inherited three sons, um, which, you know, if you want to go through trial, inherit someone else's family. Um, <laughs> but if any of my family are here this morning, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you for that. Okay. And so where are you currently? Where are you worshipping currently? And what's, you know, um, in terms of EMI, where, you know, where do you see yourself and where do you see yourself going forward? Okay, well, I was on uh, the leadership of EMI um, nationally, and I stepped down from that. Um, I can't even remember when it was now. It was about a year and a half ago, I suppose. Um, and I'm the pastor now in Navin, um, and I have been there, and I've never ministered anywhere else in leadership terms in local church, but... Um, I'm, I'm there and pastoring there. We are in a new day in Navin. Um, there's, there's new things happening at the moment. So I kind of see my ministry as reestablishing things and, um, and leaving a legacy. Because of the age I'm at, I know that you know, the future for me is looking very bright as far as retirement's concerned. Hallelujah. But God won't allow me to retire. That's a big, I have a big issue with God over that. Um, he just keeps saying, keep going, keep going. And hopefully someday he'll actually say, now's the time to take a back seat and maybe do something a little bit different. But at the moment, I'm still pastoring in Navin. All right. Thank you okay. very much, uh, Richard. And um, I will actually let you take a rest now. Thank but you we very much. are so looking forward to the word that the Lord has laid in your heart. So um, I'd like to welcome the worship team now at the moment. Good morning, church. Let's just stand up and get ready to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Amen.
We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who everyone will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds victory. Yeah. Who saves? We sing to the God who always makes a way. Because He hung upon the cross, then He rose upon the grave. My God still from the stones away. Yeah. Just wanna speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there's a peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just wanna speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life 
Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety. Over every enemy, Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout, Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness. Over every enemy. Power. 
word. Your name is healing. Your name.
Um, we're going to come around communion today, so if we could give out the emblems, please. And everyone can take a seat and just relax for a minute. Um, tourist day, I brought my kids to the park and uh, I met this lady and um, her granddaughter was making her Holy Communion. And she was there and she was reciting the Our Father prayer. And I remembered my own communion, what it was like, you know, coming up to the event, you know, uh, you're learning all about Jesus and, you know, uh, you're going to church and you're preparing for it and you're excited about it. And I just want to ask everybody here today, what's your communion like with God? What, what does it look like? How many hours a week do you spend in communion with God? Or how many hours a week do you spend watching soaps? Would it be 10 hours? Because it takes 10 hours to read the New Testament nearly through, you know? And on Friday evening, I was sitting down and I was reading the book of Revelations. And the reason why I was reading it was because the Lord spoke to me a couple of weeks ago and he said to me, he gave me a vision. And there I was with these big fat legs and he said, you're getting lazy. You're getting lazy. So I said, okay, I need to get some gasoline and get fired up. So I'm going to read the whole Bible through. And while I was reading the whole Bible through, the Holy Spirit says to me, communion. And then I saw a bowl and it was just leaves in it. That's the state of our communion with God. That's our church. That's what we're like. We're not eating enough of the word. And I asked the Lord, I said, what way do you want me to bring this message? And he said, with great concern. And I spent the whole day yesterday, I just wept. I just cried because I felt that uh, just the Holy Spirit, just how sad and how grieved God was. And I sat down with a pen and paper and I said, okay, what do I, what do I write? And he said, I don't want you to write anything. I want you to speak boldly and bluntly to the people because I've sent people already because if you haven't been paying attention, twice in the last month we've had people come and speak to us about being lukewarm. It's not okay. We had Ezekiel, then we had Pamela, and she had a message about knocking on the door. Well, Jesus, he's sending the Facebook message, the email, the WhatsApp, and he's asking you to wake up. We are in a critical condition. It is not okay. It is not okay. I don't know what happened. But you know what? COVID was a good thing because it came into lockdown and it was time with Jesus and now everything has gone back and we've gone back to watching soaps and whatever else is beyond telly. This is not okay. It is not okay. I was so grieved yesterday. I was so grieved. The Lord said we are in a critical condition. Bally Firm is not on fire. The fire is going out and we need to do something about it. It is not okay. So I'm going to ask everybody, will you stand and will you repent? We need to repent as a church because we've neglected, because Jesus died so we could have communion with him. It's the very reason. And we're not having communion. We're eating bowls of salad. It's not enough. It's not sufficient. And you might even say, well, you know what? I'm listening to a podcast. It's not enough. It's a bowl of salad. It won't get you through. It won't. It won't get you through. We've had people come here talking, talking to the church and they've been saying to us, you know, what kind of fruit you produce. And we're not producing anything. We're nothing. We're drying out. We're drying out as a church. And I'm just going to be open and honest. You know, I used to come here and you'd walk in and you'd feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the last couple of weeks, it's not here. It's a few little tingles. It's not here and it's not okay. It's not okay. I'm not happy with a few tingles. I want more of God. I want to walk in God's glory. I want to say the name of Jesus and I want him to show up. I want to feel his presence. So before you take communion, I ask, will you all stand with me today? And let's repent as a church. Right? Jesus died. Father, we come now as a church and we stand here, Lord God, and we repent, Jesus. We repent for neglecting you. You died so we could have communion with you, and we've been wasting your time. We haven't been good stewards. We've been lazy servants. We repent, Lord. We repent and we commit, Lord God, our time to you. And we ask you, Jesus, will you forgive us for what we have done? I just ask you, Lord, that you will just give everyone a fresh filling, Lord God. Even though we don't deserve it, would you give us a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit right now, Lord? In Jesus' name, amen. You can take your communion now. When all I see is the battle you see my victory when all I see is the mountain 
You see my move, and as I walk through shadows, Your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, but I am safe with You. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifting high. Oh God, the blood belongs to You. And every fear I'll lay at Your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Lord, even in our negativity, perhaps we love you, Lord. We say we love you because that is a good response, Lord. That is a proper response. That is a human response to you, Lord, because you gave so much and you're still giving through the Holy Spirit and through each other. So we thank you, Lord, for everyone here. Thank you for each child, each adult, each in betweener, if there's such a thing. <laughs> and thank you, Lord, for each one who came, Lord. And thank you that each one is precious to you. They mean a lot to you, Lord. That we just ask you, Lord, that um, we ask you that each one here would allow you to minister to them, because that's your purpose, Lord, to, to minister, Lord, to different ways. You love us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
And now it's time for the children to go out. I think we've only one group, is that correct? Yeah, so they're all upstairs. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, worship group. So we're going to have Richard come and speak to us now. You have a choice of microphones. I don't know which one you want. Try one. Try, try that one. Thank you, Lord, for the message Richard is going to bring. That would be a blessing, Lord. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we have a clock at the back in Navin. Um, I did that so that uh, those that are long-winded like me would know when to stop. Um, I'm the only one that's learned the lesson, but uh, there you go. Um, I've actually, um, I normally just write everything out in paper, but when I go to speak somewhere else, I put it out in the iPad, but I don't trust um, elon electronic things, so I've actually got it written out somewhere, um, so if this doesn't work, uh, don't worry, I have a backup, and if that doesn't work, we we'll still have the Holy Spirit, so it'll be grand uh, this morning. Um, as I was driving uh, down the road, uh, here or up the road, depends whether Dublin's down or up in your mentality. Um, I was coming down the M3 and I said, Lord, is there anything particular you want me to say to any individual or individuals today apart from the message I've prepared for the church? And I, you know, that was it kind of thing. And as I was driving along, and about a couple or three or four miles later, there was this thought came into my head, and it was to do with Abraham and Sarah, 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 sorry, I keep saying Sarah, there's a girl that got saved recently named Sarah, um, she's from Dublin, I had to come out to Navin to get saved, but there, that's just another story, um, <laughs> praise God, uh, but uh, Sarah, or Sarah and Abraham had to leave um, Ur of the Chaldees, and they got a certain part of the journey and it says in Acts that when, I'm, I'm doing this from memory, it says in Acts, whenever uh, Abraham's father died, then they moved on to the land in which you now inhabit. I think this was Stephen speaking before he was stoned, maybe, um, or maybe it was Peter when he spoke on the day of Pentecost. I can't remember which, but it says that happened. And I'm just going to, for just a couple of minutes, just take time to g just go through a couple of things here with this. And uh, I hope it's really relevant to one or two or three or four people. The first thing is that your first destination isn't your last destination, okay? Because they got a certain distance, but it wasn't actually where God wanted them to get to. The second thing was they didn't start to bear real fruit until they reached the destination which God was actually sending them in. The journey was to get to there the blessings on the road were not the real deal. The real deal was when they actually got in. You may actually think you've missed it or you're too old or whatever. And they were. But God still blessed them because God's promise, His word is true. His word is sure. God promised Abraham that he would uh, uh, sire a multitude greater than the sands and the seashore or the stars in the sky. And God fulfilled that for him through one, through Isaac, through one, through Jacob, through 12, and the rest is history. And when God starts to do something, you never actually know how it's going to finish up. So this was their journey. And this is the journey that they took. I'm trying to, just things that are coming back to me as I, I speak this to you. So what, what I'm trying to get at is that you may think you've missed it. You may think that you're too old. You may think that things have passed you by. But, and the reality is you're just on the journey. And no matter how long it takes, doesn't really matter what age you are at the end of it. 
If God has an assignment for you to complete and you're faithful to Him, He will complete it. Hallelujah. And you will receive the due honor and glory that's due to His name because you followed Him. Hallelujah. It's His honor and glory, but He is pleased to share a little bit with you. You know, it says in Scripture, uh, I don't give my glory to another. But if you're faithful to Him, He will actually partner with you. Hallelujah. In what He's doing. Not what you're doing, what he's doing. And this is what Abraham and Sarah had to get in alignment with the perfect purpose of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, I'm going to open this electronic device and um, see if we can get somewhere. I think the first, I'm going to refer to three scriptures and I don't actually have... um, planned to open the three scriptures, uh, just refer to them. So, but the first one will be in Genesis 1.1, and I I would assume that unless you're not saved and you're a total pagan, that you know what Genesis 1.1 says. Uh, So, my title is Mobilizing the Word of God in Your Life. Hallelujah. Mobilizing the Word of God in Your Life. You know, we've had, um, I think it's been referred to, we've had Two years of lockdowns, we've come out of lockdown, and the, the, the tendency is let's go back to normal. Let's just kind of, you know, uh, do things the way they, we've always done them. Let's, it's programming as normal back to RTE1, RTE2, Virgin Media, BBC1, BBC2, Sky, whatever, you know, turns you on. We'll just go back to the regular programming. I'm, I'm, I'm using them as illustrations in the church context. But the thing is, we had no sooner come out of context that in European soil, there was a very serious and still going on war began. And we had only come out of one situation whenever fear arose again in people's hearts in another situation. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised that before next Christmas, there's another situation arises as well, because something is happening in our world that God is shaking everything that can be shaken. And there's, um, somebody said once, you know, people are just people, they're pawns of the enemy and all the rest of it. There are evil people around. People, a lot of people don't think like we think. Do Do you understand that? I've been saved 39 years. And I've found, as we've been doing evangelism on the streets, that people don't think like I think. Because you've been Christianized in a Christian community, you forget that there's a world out there that is evil. And people, if they get enough of the evil, they become inherently evil in their thoughts and actions. I know there's a lot of people there that are are not born again, not Christians, and they do actually do good work. Hallelujah for them. But there's other people, and they have plans, and they have purposes that go totally against the purposes of God. And they are deceived, and they are deceitful. So there's a great danger that we again become so church-centric, can I use that kind of word, so church-centric that we forget about God's mission. It says in Mark chapter 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And these signs shall follow those who do that. So when we decide to get into alignment with the mission of God, we will see things begin to move. Hallelujah. We will see shifts begin to take place. Now, once a fortnight, we're out in the streets in Navin. I want to tell you, there's things shifting in people's lives as we speak to them. It hasn't happened to me, but others have said, as they talk to people, people are saying, my goodness, there's something happening to me. There's something strange taking place. They don't understand that that's, they can sense it, but it's actually, they don't understand it's the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, moving through the words that are being spoken, words of testimony, words of truth, hallelujah, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that it's moving through into those people's hearts and lives. And their hearts have been changed, strangely warmed, hallelujah. And I know that someday, if we continue to do this, we are going to see a breakthrough, hallelujah. And I just don't say that because it's in God's Word. I, we've seen it twice before when we've done this, down through the years. 
And we've seen breakthroughs take place as a result. Hallelujah. So I think we should really begin to think more deeply about what the normal Christian life should actually look like. There's a family in our church, and he's a psychiatrist, I think, and she lectures in Maynooth, I think, or something like that. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, she came out the first time, the last day we were in evangelism. She came out with us, and um, she said, you know, in my country, which was Nigeria, she says, you know, in my country, we did this all the time. But since we came to work and live in Ireland, I've never done this in Ireland. And she was looking at everything, and she joined with people who were moving in to talk to other people and engaged with the conversations, and she was exhilarated, hallelujah. It had been so many years since she'd done this, but hallelujah, she was, uh, this isn't my message, by the way, uh, she, she was, she, she, her heart was strangely warmed with the action of being a testament to God's goodness and grace, hallelujah, amen, amen. So, let's look at Genesis 1-1. Who can quote Genesis 1, 1 for me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. I heard somebody quoting John chapter 1, I think. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. <clears throat> well, it would kind of do as well. Um, you know, we live in the, the, the decade and the Hebrew calendar of the five, seven, eight O's. Okay. And the Hebrew calendar... It's 5782. That's the, the actual calendar date. So when it hits 6,000, um, that's the end in the Hebrew calendar. Unfortunately, they've got, it, they've got it actually slightly wrong, but that's never mind about that anyway. Um, the calendar, the Hebrew calendar, uh, this is the decade of the 80s in the Hebrew calendar. In Hebrew, the word uh, for eight is the word for this word called pay, P-E-Y. The word in Hebrew means, the word pay means mouth or breath. Hallelujah. And embedded within the pay, uh, within that Hebrew word, is another word, uh, which is bet. Have you ever been bet? Oh, yeah, you have. But it's B-E-I-T, this word. And it means habitation or dwelling. And it's, it's two, so well, it's, it's eight, two we're in. But this two is also embedded in, in pay. I know that's slightly complicated. But what it means is that um, in the mouth and breath, it's like breathing uh, habitation into being. Okay, that's what it means. So when God, And so this word pay is in created. It's embedded in the word created. So when God says... Uh, that in the beginning he created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning God breathed with his mouth uh, habitation into being. He created the heavens, which isn't the physical heavens, it's spiritual heavens, and the earth, which is the physical realm in which we dwell, which includes the cosmos. So God created the heavens and the earth. He paid, he breathed, he, he spoke it into being. Hallelujah. And this, in the Hebrew calendar, is the decade of speaking habitations into being. Hallelujah. We're in a, 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 a ten-year uh, moment of getting ourselves in line with releasing the Word of God into not just our lives, but into our community. And this is what my message is all about this morning. So the word created has this embedded in it. And it's the decade really of the double portion, where with realignment, double portion can be our thing, our promise scripture in, in Navin is Haggai 2.9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord of hosts, and in this place I will grant peace, says the Lord of hosts. So the glory of the latter house, the glory of the latter habitation being greater than the former. And our responsibility is to mobilize the Word of God and to get it into action. There was a um, anybody remember learning about, if you learned Irish history, it wasn't, he wasn't great, Winston Churchill? Eh? Winston Churchill. He, in the Second World War, he was the wartime prime minister. 
And he was very articulate, very good. He wrote loads of books. He painted. He was all kinds of things. But he, in 1940, he became British Prime Minister. And on his maiden speech, he gave such an articulated and uh, inspiring, mobilizing speech that his rival for Prime Minister, Lord Halifax, who didn't get the job, uh, said of him, he has mobilized the English language and sent it to war. And you see, in mobilizing the English language, he was coming up against a demonically inspired dictator whose name was Hitler, who was also a great orator, but in a different way. And the thing is, we're, we have an enemy and we're up against him and he's articulate and he's good. He will deceive us if he can get away with it. But our job is to mobilize God's word, hallelujah, into the space in which it is most useful, hallelujah. It's easy to have it on the shelf in our minds, but never we download it and start to use it, we will begin to see it work really, really effectively. You see, the enemy as a slick operator, he said to Adam and Eve, has God said? Called into question God's word, you see. And if God's word is called into question enough, unbelief begins to take hold and the word of God becomes something dead and religious to us. It doesn't have the life that God put into it when he inspired it and we wrote it by the spirit of God. So we have to believe the Word, live the Word, and allow the Word to live through us. Hallelujah. So let's release it. So I'm going to go through a problem, and then I'm going to give us an answer, hopefully give us an answer. And you can say, well, you haven't mentioned prayer yet. And you know, I've been praying for almost four decades but it's only when I release God's Word the prayers start to work because they ride along. You know, the Scripture says when God comes down, will He really find faith upon the earth? And when we release, and I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes, the Word of God by faith, hallelujah, we will see it accomplish marvelous and wonderful things. The first problem that we have, and this is where I'm going to use a second Scripture, it's Mark 9. Uh, 2 to 9 if you want to, or 2 to 29 if you want to look it up. Uh, the first problem is, or this problem is shut mouth Christianity. Have you heard, and have you ever been not told something and the people around you knew about it? And you thought, they'll shut mouths, you know. They wouldn't mention it. They wouldn't say a word. Well, you see, I'm sure God's looking down and say, you know, there are a bunch of shut mouths. They won't, they won't talk about me. They won't gossip about me. They won't speak about me. And you know, I'm standing here and I'm saying this to you, but you're looking back at me and I've got to say I don't talk about Jesus enough. Shut mouth Christianity. Well, this, this situation was where they, Jesus went with a couple of disciples, Peter and John, I think it was, up the Mount of Transfiguration. And uh, they had a great time, a great meeting. It was one of those presence-filled meetings, hallelujah. You know, Elijah and Moses appeared. The glory descended. Peter says, let's make a couple of tents here. Let's set up a tent, and, 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 and this is a great well to sit at. This is a great truth we're in, hallelujah. Let's just park here and have blessings, have meetings and blessings. And there, You know, God, God's all into that. But down the mountain, His disciples weren't able to open the mouth of a mute boy. Um, and the thing about them was that they were pretty masked themselves. They were pretty mute because they weren't able to do one miracle. And, you know, we can have really good meetings. But if we go out through the door and lift our own belief that we've left at the door coming in, and we, we step out of the car, well, maybe, it was, maybe it's before we get out of the car even, we, we just lift that suitcase of unbelief and leave it, put it in the luggage compartment the, or the boot and leave it there. I'll get that one and come back out again. We come into church and we have the glory hallelujah time. We say hallelujah to the word of God. We, we, we bless each other. We get back into the car, lift our 
luggage of unbelief and go about our week. And God says, I see all of that. And I want to change the shut mouthness. There's two things that happened in verse 19 of Mark chapter 9. Jesus um, said, said a couple of things uh, to them and never came down. He said, oh, faithless generation. And he said something, like, bring the boy to me. There's two things happened here. First of all, Jesus showed boldness. He wasn't concerned of whether the boy was going to get healed or not. Uh, maybe, and I, I remember once in Navin, this guy saying, well, we don't, in our church, we don't pray for anybody because if they don't get healed, it calls God into question. And I thought, what a stupid statement. Let's pray for people. Hallelujah. You know, because not everybody does get healed. I, like, you know, uh, like I've had to go to the doctor the odd time. But, you know, the thing about it is somebody will get healed if we're faithful. Hallelujah. And the more we do it, the more often it will actually take place. Because faith in us builds. I haven't even got to this part of the message yet. So, there was a lack of boldness. The spirit of Elijah was not present. He was up in the mountain. He was in church in the mountain, but he wasn't down in the valley where the people were, where the people who actually needed uh, a work and their lives done. He wasn't actually there. And the boldness of Elijah is promised to us in Malachi. He said, the spirit of Elijah will come and he will turn fathers to their children, children to their fathers before the terrible and great day or the great and terrible day of the Lord. And okay, we could say that happened 400 years after that when Jesus came and when John the Baptist came, but it's the, the great and terrible day of the Lord. So there's a terrible day yet ahead and we're looking for the spirit of Elijah for boldness to come into our hearts and our lives like Elijah, that even if it's a caramel experience, we will stand up and be prepared to call the fire down if absolutely necessary. Secondly was the lack of faith. And this isn't verbal confession of faith. I, I could probably quote parts of the Nicene Creed. I could quote you uh, scriptures, I could quote all kinds of things, but when it comes to dealing with real life issues, is there faith in the offering for those issues? Do we stand there on behalf? Of, we've had a few people come to the Lord that we've been discipling, and one of the things I've said to the couple of people and myself that are discipling those ones is to say, we have to stand by faith for them. Hallelujah. They are young in the faith. You know, 90% of people who come to Christ need discipled. It's only about 10% seem to be grand. But the other 90%, so there's work in discipling. And what, what I've said is that we are the ones, the faith people, we're the mature Christians, we're the one who, ones who can lift them, hallelujah, to a place of strength in their faith. That this fledgling thing that they have, that they need rocked a little bit and fed a bottle and, you know, uh, and a, a little bit of vanilla custard, or what is it you feed babies nowadays? But anyway, whatever it is, they need fed, and we must encourage and strengthen them. Will he really find active faith upon the earth when he comes? So let's think about opening the shut mouth and letting Jesus be the king, hallelujah, of the words that we say. So the second, that's the second one. The third one is about our faith. Uh, working faith will mobilize the Word of God and send it to war. Okay, who's going to quote to me Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1? Anybody know it? Hebrews chapter 11, faith is what? Substance evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Faith is substance. Faith is evidence. So, let's look at the, the words. Let's look at these words and see what we can get out of them. 
Active working faith, I have down here, has two elements. Okay, so this word substance. 2,000 years ago when this word was used in everyday life, it was used as the, as, as the same word as for a title deed or certificate, certific, certificate of ownership. Hallelujah. For the title deed or certificate of ownership. So it is the substance. Okay, so you, it's as if you have the title deed of something in your hand, even though you haven't seen the property. But you know it's yours because you have the title deed. In Ephesians 1.14, it says that the Holy Spirit lives within us. He's the guarantor of our inheritance. Hallelujah. You have the title deed within you. If you have a believer in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit within you. So faith is the substance of what you've received already. Hallelujah. And anybody? Amen. Anybody here not born again? Just it might be easier. Oh, no, okay. Okay, so look, what I'm trying to get to you is that you already have within you, hallelujah, the title deeds of your faith. And regardless of where you go and stand, should you get shot to death, you're going shooting straight to heaven, hallelujah. So there's no reason to fear. There, there's no reason. It doesn't mean to say you're stupid about everything, but you know, you know, you say, well, I'm tired of this life. You just want to go be with Jesus, and you walk off the nearest cliff. No, that's not an answer to anything. But what I'm saying is that you can put yourself out there, hallelujah, because you've already received everything that uh, you need for the next life. Praise the Lord. You have the title deed of it already. Second word, evidence. Evidence 2,000 years ago would have meant a substructure or a foundation to build upon. Okay, so it's the evidence of things not seen. Whoever sees, um, whoever sees a foundation, unless at the time it's being built, you don't. It's always below the ground. But it's strong enough and good enough to build upon. Hallelujah. So it's the evidence of things not seen. And each of us have a foundation in our lives that's good enough to build upon. Not your inadequacy. Not you're saying, oh, I couldn't do that. Not you're saying, but, you know, I'm afraid to do that. Well, that's fine. I'm afraid to do a lot of stuff as well. And uh, those of you who follow Joyce Meyer, she's still alive. Uh, she said, do it afraid. Do it afraid. Do it anyway. Because when you face your fears, you diminish their impact on your life. Hallelujah. There's a lady in our church, and um, she, she's um, her uh, father is Irish, and her mother's English, and uh, her sister um, in England, there were some family problems. She hadn't talked to her sister for five years. So she decided that something needed to happen. This couldn't go on. There was issues that had to be sorted. And she was going to be the one that was going to have to do it. And she sat in a prayer meeting or stood in it while we prayed with her before she went over to England. And she shook with the fear of having to face the sister because, because of her own background and all the things that she had experienced in life, actually facing someone who... You know, you know the way some people say sticks and stones can break your bones, but names will never hurt you? Well, that's a lie. She, she was really concerned about the names that were going to be called out against her. And she wept and she shook, but she went and she faced it. And it wasn't easy. It was difficult, and it was as she expected. But, you know, within 48 hours of returning home to Ireland... She got a text from her sister saying, you know, we need to put the past behind us and we need to be reconciled. Her sister had 48 hours to think about it and thought better of it. And if she hadn't have faced down her fears, there would still have been no opportunity of reconciliation. It's amazing that, isn't it? Evidence. It's a faith that gives you enough to begin building. You see God doing something, well, get involved in that. You know, 
if, you, if, if God is actually on the move in something and you see that, hey, get involved in it. Put your effort into it. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm, going, to, I, I'm going to stand alongside this and see if you'll use me in the thing. You see, that even Jesus said, the Son can do nothing of Himself but only what He sees the Father doing. Hallelujah. So we can do a lot of good things. But as one guy in our church says, uh, good things are not always God things. And I've been involved in an of, awful lot of good things. But you know, if I'd only had done the God things, I wouldn't need to get a salary from the church. I, would, I could have a, a job and just do it part time. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But pastors are doing good things, but they're not of God, a lot of them. But sometimes that's actually the case. So I'm Pastor Tarmadage, I don't care anymore. So I say what I like. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I have to, I actually have to close this off. Look, we're in a moment of salvation history. We're in just this moment and season where there's a lot of stuff happening and a lot more stuff is going to happen. And the problem is let's no, not go back to the religious meetings. Let's not go back to the place where we pull the veil down over the Word of God. Because probably for two years, we, we sort of unmasked, the, unmasked ourselves a little bit because of our fears come out, some of our tremblings come out. And, uh, and, but the, the tremblings are going to actually probably continue and at varying degrees. And what God wants us to do is take the veil away. You know, it says in 2 Corinthians that the veil is taken away in Christ. Hallelujah. And once the Word of God is unveiled, see, that's what was wrong with the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Word was veiled to them. They knew about it. Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and the Word was veiled to him. He, couldn't, he understood theology, but he didn't understand the impact of the Word. And God wants us to mobilize His Word, hallelujah, and to send it to war. And you'll see redemption, salvation, Deliverance as healings happen in your church, your home, your workplace, all kind of, uh, your, your community. The things will take place. You may need to be faithful for a while in doing some of the stuff, but you will see breakthrough. You know why I'm saying it again? Because it's in God's Word. My Word shall not return unto me void, but will accomplish the purpose for which I sent it, said Isaiah in 55. Praise God. So, if you have a family issue, before I step off this platform, if you have a family issue, I'm going to pray for I'm not going to ask for a show of hands or anything like that. I'm a visiting speaker, and I, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, ruin your carpet with blood. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's not, uh, we don't do that in Navan uh, <laughs> We do hit a few people, but it's uh, in a different way. Um, can I just pray for you now? Yeah. Because families are really at the heart of God. You know, statistically, if a man comes to Jesus and gets well saved, there is a 90-plus percent chance of the whole family getting saved. If the wife becomes a Christian, the chances of the husband becoming a Christian are only 20 percent or less. If the children become Christians, uh, then it's only down to 5 percent or something like that of the whole family getting saved. But you know, if the Word of God is released into the situations, hallelujah, uh, those statistics don't matter anymore. Praise the Lord. So close your eyes, hallelujah. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the name above all names. Lord, there isn't any name under heaven by which we must be saved except your name. Lord, we thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life and no man comes to the Father except through you. Lord, we also understand that uh, you have come to give us life and give us life in all its fullness. And the, th the thief only comes to steal, rob, and destroy, but you've come to give us life. Hallelujah. So, Lord, with those words in mind, Lord, I speak over our families today in this church. I speak over them in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that whatever difficulties and hassles uh, and, and pain and anguish and depression, and emotional difficulty, and physical difficulty there is, 
I pray that you are a great God. You're a God who delivers, heals, and sets free. And I praise you, Lord, that your hand is upon each and every one of these people, these loved ones. Lord, if, because there's believers in the home, Lord, I thank you, hallelujah, for that. And Lord, I pray that the witness of those people may need to change a little bit in communication. But Lord, I pray you'd release your word into the circumstances and into the situation. And Lord, that your word as it would go forth, it would produce a mighty outflow of your spirit. Hallelujah. And that people will be filled with the glory of God in their homes. Lord, let our homes be f f uh, filled with dancing and our streets filled with joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much indeed.
take up we're going to take up an offering now and I'll just ask you to play another little bit please. thank you very much Jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord Lord we just uh, lift up the county of Cork Ooh. to you now Lord God we lift it up in prayer Lord God knowing Lord that you hear our prayers that you have said Lord God that you will answer our prayers thank you Lord thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah I just speak the name of Jesus over the county of Cork in this minute in this moment Lord God I just speak life I just speak life to Cork Lord God Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Breathe your life, Lord God. The breath of God over the county of Cork, Lord God. Let us have testimonies, Lord God. Let us hear of your great works, what you decided and declared that you will do in this country, Lord God. Have mercy on us, Lord God. Have mercy on us, we pray, Lord God. And I lift up Mehol Martin, Lord God. That's where he's from. He's from the county of Cork, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord God, that you would touch him, Lord God. That you would give him repentance, Lord. That he will turn, Lord God. You know, as, it, as he will see, Lord God, he's in a very complex situation, Lord God. That he would turn to you, Lord. And Lord God, you never fail. We turn to you, Lord God. You are there and waiting. You take back the prodigals. You are there waiting, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord God. I just thank you, Lord, because you have said, Lord God, that you are bringing back the prodigals, Lord God. You have said, Lord, that you are dealing with families. And I thank you for all that you have said, Lord God. And we just give you thanks, Lord that our prayers are answered today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful service. I know I wasn't here. I was with the kids upstairs, but I know you've been blessed by what the Lord uh, ministered to us all through um, preaching. And I can't wait to watch it back online uh, to actually, you know, be blessed as well. So I'm just going to bring us through to the announcements before we close. So um, can we have some of the information on the screen, please? Tuesday at 11 a.m., so we have our intercessory prayer. Um, so if you have any prayer requests, you can either send it through text on the um, church WhatsApp Connect or speak to Ross or Nora, and they will lift you up in prayer. There is a group meeting every uh, Tuesday at 11 o'clock. And if you're free um, or you've just been back from night shift, you can join the ladies. Men too are welcome. It's not just a ladies group. It's, it, you know, everyone's group. So join in for that. Um, and then on Wednesday at 8 p.m., we have our Zoom Bible study. So we'll be treating Act chapter 5. Uh, this is at 8 p.m. Uh, so tune in. It's on Zoom. The link is usually sent during the week. So we're going to be looking at Act Chapter 5 this coming Wednesday. Holy Spirit Night is on Thursday at 8 p.m. Please join us. Um, it's a moment of worship and prayer and listening to God's voice and people sharing testimony. So join us for that on Thursday at 8 p.m. Friday at 7 is the GC Youth. Where are the youth? Woohoo! <laughs> Up youth. Yeah. So we have the youth at 7 p.m. on Friday, every Friday. So they meet here upstairs um, in the upper room. So, yeah, come join us and invite your friends. Invite, you know, friends from school or neighbors. They will be more than welcome. 
So Sunday at 10 a.m., we have the morning prayer, the pre-service prayer. That's usually in the manor shop. So a couple of us, we meet before the service. We lift up the service in prayer and lift up every member of the, uh, of the congregation as well in, in prayer. So join us for that. And then after the prayer, it's usually for 30 minutes. And then we try and set up for the service to prepare. So if you are around, you know, come join us. Everybody is welcome. Nobody, everyone loves prayer, don't you all? So um, this week, we'll be taking the second offering, which is the international mission. So the bucket is there on your way out. Uh, support our international mission. Go Kids is next um, next week, Sunday, the 15th, from 3 to 4 p.m. So once a month, we have the kids program. It's not only for Valley Fermat's children. It's all for the neighborhood. It's for the community. So if you have friends, neighbors, invite their children. You know, it's an open place. We always have fun. Uh, there is a bit of competition going on. So the warriors, which I'm part of, we're the one leading at the moment. So if you want, if you come in, try join my group. So yeah, you're more than welcome. That's next Sunday. Flow Conference is taking place from the 30th June to 4th July. That is up in Monaghan, Ealing Church. So if you're planning to attend, please speak to Martina. I know Martina is not here today, but uh, you can speak to Robert um, or even myself and we'll pass the message on. Yeah, so there is a uh, um, list outside there. If you want to put your name and your details, you know, um, Rob will be happy to forward that on then to Martina. Wondrous Bible Week is Tuesday the 19th July to Friday the 22nd of July. This is in Whitewell Church in Belfast. So again, speak to Pastor Craig if you're planning on attending that as well. So I think in the last couple of weeks, we've been uh, sharing this information card. Um, there is a lot of it out there. I think the very first time it was placed all on the seat. I remember taking one home, but I can't remember where I placed it. But we're trying to, you know, gather information um, in terms of, um, so that we can be, we will be able to put, uh, provide information about what's happening in church, in Bali Fermat, and also EMI in general. And also to, to have um, a list of everyone so that, you know, we can support you, be it in prayer or whatever way. So pick up a card. The good thing is that if you're using an iPhone, it's actually very easy to do online. Just put your camera to the barcode and you click on the link that shows there. You can easily fill it online and submit it. It's that straightforward. Android, I'm not particularly familiar with Android phones, but I'm sure you'll be able to do the same. But if you're not technologically savvy, you can just fill in the information and the at the back and just hand it to one of the ushers, okay? So please try and do that as soon as possible. We're just trying to collate, you know, details and um, of everyone so that we can have the de we can have everyone's details to be able to share information and again for data protection your information will not be shared with anyone it's just for church purposes and if at any point in time you want your information to be deleted it will be done immediately so um emi missions globe so you speak to me if you want if you haven't gotten your e uh, your mission globes so we support the international missions with this as well as you know the offering we collect uh, once a month so if you have if you don't have a mission globe to keep all your coins and loose coins please speak to me i have spare globes to to give out so um if you haven't been added to the new whatsapp bbc announcement group please speak to Rob, and I would ask you all to check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter. Um, you can find all the information you need there. Um, I would just like to close in prayer now. Oh. Okay, so... Check your what's check the WhatsApp group uh, BBC Connect and announcement. So there is 
something that is being posted, I actually did not get all what Robert said there. So, but it's it's a, a Zoom. A, oh, a Zoom training. Yes, actually, yeah, I know what she's talking about. Sorry about that. Yeah. So there is a Zoom training on Monday. So check the WhatsApp group if you would like to sign up for that. You know, speak to Rob, speak to Brian or myself, and we'll be able to sign you up. I think it's at 7 p.m. or 7.30, 7.30 tomorrow. So, yeah, have a look. And if it's something you're interested in participating, let us know, and we can send you the link. Um, yeah, shall we pray? Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your wonderful good, uh, for your wonderful love upon our lives, O oh Lord. We thank you for the blessings we've been able to receive today, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, as we have received these blessings, O oh Lord, Father, help us to be able to share it with our neighbors, families, friends, O oh Lord, our work colleagues as we go into the community, O oh Lord. Help us to be able to share this love, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, we ask that this new week, O oh Lord, bless us. Let it be a blessed week, O oh Lord. Protect us, guide us as the kids will be returning to school, O oh Lord. We ask for your protection and your hand over their lives, O oh God. Help us, Father, Lord, as we meet, as we depart this moment, so that by the time we meet again, we will be able to give thanks and give glory to your name again for your wonderful works, O oh Lord, in our lives. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So have a wonderful week and have a blessed day.